All right, in this video, we're going to look at finding the least common denominator um, of a couple, uh, some different numbers. And again, this is important because if you're going to add or subtract fractions, if the denominators are not the same, you're going to want to find a common denominator. And usually the least common denominator uh, is going to be the best just because it'll keep the arithmetic a little bit easier. Um, you know, one way to find least common denominators, of course, is to make a factor tree and start factoring and look at common factors and list all those and multiply them back together. Um, and we've seen examples of that. The way I typically find least common denominators is I look at the largest denominator. So I look at the largest denominator. And in this case, the largest denominator is 30. And then what I start doing is I look at multiples of that number. And I basically think when I'm looking at multiples of that number, does the other denominator go into that number? So, okay, so, so clearly, so what I'm trying to say is, and I'll illustrate this on the next example as well, um, the denominator is 30. Well, I think, you know, does 20 go into 30? No, it definitely doesn't. Let's look at a multiple of 30, say 60. Okay, and again, a multiple, you're just multiplying by a whole number. So, uh, you know, 130, 230s would give us 60. And now I think, is 60 divisible by 20? Well, yes it is. 60 is also divisible by 30. This is going to be our least common denominator in this case. Let's look at an, the next example. We've got 7 over 8, 11 over 16, 5 over 24. So to me, uh, the largest number is 24. Well, 8 does, di does divide into 24, but 16 doesn't divide into 24. So that's not going to be my least common denominator. Let me look at another multiple of 24, say 48. Well, again, um, 8 goes into 48. Again, since 8 goes into 24, it's going to go into any multiple. Okay, so uh, 8 goes into 48. 16 also goes into 48. Well, again, 24 goes into 48 because we're looking at multiples. So, again, this is going to be our least, our least common denominator. Let's maybe make up one more example. So suppose we have one-half, uh, one-third, and maybe one-fifth, just to illustrate again. So I look at, so to, let's find the least common denominator. So I look at the largest denominator, which in this case is five. Well, two and three, uh, five is not divisible by two, five is not divisible by three. So let's look at the next multiple, ten. Well, ten is divisible by two, but three isn't, so that doesn't work. Let's look at the next multiple of 5, which would be 15. Well, again, 15 is not divisible by 2, so that doesn't work. Let's look at 20. Well, two, 20 is divisible by 2, but 20 is not divisible by 3, so that doesn't work. The next multiple would be 25. 25 is not divisible by 2, so that doesn't work. Let's look at 30, the next multiple. Uh, 30 is, is divisible by 2. Hey, it's also divisible by 3, and it's also divisible by 5. So this is going to be the least common denominator. Okay, so maybe this seems a little tedious, but I think if you practice a couple times, this is how I've done it my whole life, honestly, um, finding a, a, a denominator. And to me, it's much faster than finding... Uh, um, you know, making factor trees and factors and doing all that stuff. So I look at the largest number, and then I just start looking at multiples of it. Uh, as soon as I find the multiple uh, that's divisible by all the denominators, that's my least common denominator. 